I was born in uh, Indio at the uh, JFK Hospital, and I grew up right down the street from it most of my life. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I wanted a guitar ever since I could remember. And uh, my babysitter, when I was really young, got me one. Like, my, I don't know if my parents were even, like, wanted me to have one. I think they kind of felt like she was spoiling me. But um, I still have that guitar. It's, uh, it's like a Jemco, you know. It's not a great guitar, but um, I think I always thought that, oh, one day I'll have a kid and I'll give it to him. But now I got a kid and he doesn't want that guitar. He's got a cooler one. <laughs> but yeah, no, I was always into guitar. I was wanting to play it. And I think the other instruments kind of came later. Yeah, I was definitely into skateboarding. Um, and they did go hand in hand. I think uh, a lot of the cooler punk rock that I discovered on an early age was usually off like skateboard videos and stuff like that. Yeah, um, gosh, I remember getting that blockbuster video in Indio, Turn the Other Cheek, it was like a GNS skateboard uh, video and it had Yawning Man on it. And uh, thinking that was really cool because I knew those dudes were from you know the same town. Honestly, a lot of the generator stuff, I came like a little bit too late for that, for that part of the scene. I, I, there was some, but by the time I was, you know, old enough to get out there to the parties and stuff, it had slowed down quite a bit. Most of the parties were getting broken up. Um, there was a few out in like Indio Hills and stuff and the Nude Bowl. I remember being at the Nude Bowl when it burned down. That was probably, I think that was the last thing they had there. Um, there was a few, but it was mainly Rhythm and Bruise for me because I was 14, 15 at the time, and it was all ages, and it was right down the street from my house. Uh, Mario and Nana and Larry were super cool with my folks, and so they really trusted them and felt safe just pretty much dropping me off after school and picking me up when it was time to go to bed. So I used to hang out there all the time and super exposed to all kinds of killer music and uh, yeah, for better or for worse, that changed me. I, I knew back then exactly what I wanted to do. <laughs> um, I guess all places probably mostly on guitar first, uh, sometimes on bass, it just kind of depends. I think sometimes I'm just throwing whatever out there or playing what feels good like to my fingers. Sometimes I'm just practicing and I'll be like, oh, that's cool. Um, but it's all different things, you know? I'd like to say it all comes from, you know, something really cool or in depth, but for me, I think it's just uh, trying to sound cool and whatever feels good. You know, probably not as much as I would like, like to, but I do enjoy it. Like for me, jamming is, is listening. That's my, that's where I think uh, really cool stuff happens that you wouldn't normally get on your own. Like when I jam with people, I like trying to really pay attention to what they're doing and almost mirror it at first, and then try and change it into something else. And to me, that's like, it, it makes everything cohesive and at the same time, very uh, fresh and different. Like, I, I think uh, the, at an early age realizing like, man, these guys are really paying attention and listening to each other. And that to me was really cool, like good jamming. So that's, that's kind of my favorite part of it. It's like, you know, you'd never come up with those riffs or those ideas if you weren't bouncing off somebody else. And I love them both. Like I love recording. To me, that's fun. But it's definitely not I wouldn't say not as fun as playing live, but playing live, that's the immediate, like, you get it all out off your chest. And, you know, having a audience to react off of or to try and impress is always exciting and feels good. Uh, recording's definitely different. It's a lot of sitting around and waiting and setting up stuff and listening back. And I think to a lot of people that'd probably be boring, but to me, I love it. Uh, yeah, no, uh, Damien I remember from early on, like Rhythm and Bruise days. Uh, Robbie I met more, uh, gosh, I want to say probably 
around the same time as the rock for Isaiah that You Know Who and Waxy did, if maybe not, maybe a little bit before that. But I remember hearing about the band a lot. Uh, I remember seeing the stickers everywhere. I was like, man, these guys got a lot of stickers. <laughs> And they buy a lot of gas because they're at every single gas station in the whole desert. <laughs> All up and down the tan, you see Waxley. So I remember thinking like, man, and I'm going to check these guys out and seeing them. And uh, I don't remember who I talked to first about it, but it, at some point me and Robbie were like, hey, we should jam sometime. I'm like, yeah, for sure. And uh, I remember watching Waxley play and thinking like, I'd like to rock drums to that. It's like different bands, you might have your different instrument that you'd like or that you'd really but for me I was just like yeah it's like just heavy rock and playing drums that would be fun so yeah I don't remember exactly how it happened but I remember kind of feeling like I imagined it in my head and then <laughs> shortly after that it was happening so I was like yeah this is cool they are definitely all their own thing um, drums is probably the most fun to play because it's more physical but uh, Guitar would probably be, I would have to consider my main instrument. I think that's uh, it's kind of what I started with and what I always kind of go back to. It's my main songwriting tool, but it's all fun. Bass is fun too. Uh, I've been doing that a lot more recently and I'm really sinking my teeth into it. It's fun. Um, but yeah, they all have something cool about them. And I think uh, for me, it's trying to do an instrument and sound like that like I want to if I'm playing drums I want to sound like a drummer because you can always tell them like oh that's a guitar player playing the drums like sure he's around drums and that dude might pick up a couple chops here and there but, but whatever it is if it's playing bass like I want to sound like a bass player so it's a cool it's cool to be able to jump around but I think that's uh you know I don't want to be a jack of all trades master of none I want to try and like really get down on everything. I think, uh, like, I don't think I'm, uh, I don't think I'm the best drummer in the world, but I think what I have going for me as a drummer is that I can play guitar and other instruments, and a lot of times when I'm jamming with people, I feel like I know what they want to hear, because I've been in, in those shoes. So that, I, th I think, and that goes both ways for every other instrument. Having knowledge of different ones really helps you be able to, uh, I don't know, not just concentrate on what you're doing, but make it how you, at least how you think people want to hear it. Uh, I love being on the road. It's, uh, I don't think it's like what everyone probably imagines, but uh, I really enjoy it a lot. Um, it's getting up and having really only one thing to concentrate or work on and that's what I like doing the most, which is playing music. So to me, it's very simple. It's a lot of fun. Um, and uh, it's one of the cooler things about growing up out here in the scene, because uh, if it wasn't for the desert scene, you know, I probably wouldn't get out of India as much as I get to. <laughs> but most of the traveling that I've done, and I love to travel, it's primarily all touring. Uh, it's been the United States and, uh, say, Europe mostly. I uh, got to go to Brazil once, Canada once. Um, but yeah, it seems like it's mostly Europe and U.S. And looking forward to doing Australia real soon. That's been one place I've always wanted to check out, so that's going to be cool. Day-to-day -day basis. All right, well, um, sleeping is something like if you can sleep anywhere if you could sleep on a couch or a backstage dirty gross you know i guess you call it a couch too but if you can sleep anywhere that'll help if you're not very particular about what kind of food you eat that helps a lot um sometimes it's a feast and someone really hooks it up or the venue has a great chef and you're just having some awesome steaks or something a lot of times it's like a deli tray and five dudes fighting over the meat. Uh, it's not comfortable, it's kind of like camping. But if you like camping, you're stoked. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of waiting around, it's a lot of parking lots and a lot of just 
you know. It's funny to me when someone's just like, hey, can you get me backstage? It's like, all right, but everyone's partying out here and it's like a fun festival or something. Like back there, everyone's working and it's kind of boring. And, <laughs> you know, maybe very rarely you'll see someone from a bigger band that's kind of exciting. But for the most part, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's I don't think it's what people think it is. But uh, it's still fun. I love it. Yeah, it it kind of made me look at, uh, like, you think about what's important, what do you want, you know, in my case, Zeke, to, like, understand or take from my life. And uh, I think from an outside perspective, a lot of people would probably be like, oh, you're a dad now, you better stop messing around and get serious and stop doing music. And, uh, you know, if that's what you want to teach your kid then cool I totally would respect that but to me it kind of made me feel like I want him to feel like he can do whatever he wants and he can succeed so you know there's no guarantees but it makes me be like well I this is what I love this is what I want to do like I got to succeed I got to show him that it's possible because whether he wants to be a professional skateboarder or musician or you know accountant whatever he wants I want him to know that it's doable and that, you know, he can do it. So, and that's the kind of lesson that I think you have to see. You can't just say it. Like, oh, you can do anything. You know, I'd rather show him, like, well, this is what I wanted to do, and I did it, and you can too. So it made me kind of get more serious about it, if anything. Uh, the way it sounds? <laughs> no, I think it's more of a feeling than a sound thing. I love the way it feels. I like jamming. Um, and, uh, I like volume, like I like loud rock and roll, it makes me feel good. Uh, well, I think what's funny about that is we're still talking about that 20 years later and there's more happening now, um, as far as places to play and, you know, the amount of music that's getting played, the, uh, uh, the Hood is having great shows. There's all kinds of, you know, venues and places to play. It was hard to find places to play back then. That's why they had generator parties and stuff like that. There was a, a rad time during Rhythm and Brews where there was a cool spot, but, you know, it was hard for them back then. And not to say it's easy now, but there's way more opportunities if you're in a band to get out and play now. So I think it's good. I think it's headed in the right direction. And... Um, you know, I'm sure 20 years from now, they'll be talking about now. I hope. I think there's, the desert sound is definitely a thing. Uh, for me, it's uh, probably like the Kaya sound, the tuned down, heavy, you know, sp spaced out, but rocking. That's kind of the desert sound and it's, funny because there's people all over the world that are attracted to that sound and playing it um, but that's what if I think about it in my head that's what the desert sound is but having said that like there's so many bands from the desert that sound nothing like that and that wasn't their thing and uh, they're definitely no less desert like I guess the true desert sound is really uh, quite eclectic but that's what I think about when someone says desert sound. I think, you know, Ampegs and Rickenbackers and Big Ludwigs and super heavy fuzzed out guitars. And I think uh, even the bands that aren't going for that sound have a little bit of it in them just growing up out here. I think it's kind of hard not to. Um, I don't know, it seems like everyone went from like learning to play and starting off with punk rock and then learning to jam and kind of going almost in more of a jazz direction. But everything, uh, it's definitely got a swing and a groove. It's not, it's not like cut and paste music. It's stuff that people had to hang out in a garage and really feel out until they felt they got it right. 